hi hi welcome back again to my channel my name is Chelma and in today's video we're going to be talking about something that I feel in recent days I've been getting a lot of comments and questions about so it's regarding applying for a student visa but in this video I am going to be concentrating on the documents that you need to apply for your student visa Now, I have a more fleshed out version of this video. It is one of the very first videos I made when I started this channel. And I would highly encourage you to watch that video because it takes you through not only the documents you need to apply, but also the step-by-step -step process of applying for a student visa, okay? Now, I just wanted to keep things simple on here because sometimes when people are attempting something they've never done before, they just want information in bite-sized bits so it's easy to understand, easy to digest, and easy to action, right? And that's why I decided to make this video where we go through the document checklist. Let's get straight to it, right? So, the first thing obviously would be your COE. So your COE is where everything starts. This is a document that is issued by the institution or the education provider you're coming to study at. And it is just a document that proves that you've actually been accepted into that course. So it would provide details of the course provider's name, the duration of the course, I think the amount that you're paying in your tuition and all of that. And the only way to get a COE is after you have applied to a school and gone through the admission process and then you've been offered the course, you've accepted the course by paying the first installment of your tuition fees. So once all of that is done, the school would issue you a COE. So that document is very important because you need it to apply for your visa. The next would be English language requirements. Now, I know with this one, there's two sides to it. Depending on the passport that you hold, you may actually not be required to provide English language proficiency results towards gaining admission, okay? But for the purpose of the visa, you still need to provide English proficiency test results. Now you need a 5.5 in IELTS, that's the International English Language Testing System, a 46 in TOEFL, a 42 in PTE, and 162 in the CAE, which is the Cambridge English Advanced. I think that's what it's called. So you would need to provide evidence of English language proficiency at the levels that I have mentioned, depending on the particular test you have sat, right? So that's it for the English language requirements. The next would be identity documents because obviously you need to prove who you are. And with this one, you just need passports and birth certificates and any national issued ID, which is approved by the Australian government. If you're coming from a place like Nigeria, your passport and your birth certificate should be enough. You also need to fulfill academic requirements. So for academic requirements, this just speaks to any previous level of study you've done and documents to show or prove that you have completed that level of study. So if you're coming in to study a master's, for instance, you want to provide things like, uh, like transcripts and your degree from your undergraduate study. And if you're coming in here to study a bachelor, for instance, then you need documents related to your high school leaving certificate exams and you know things like that. I am sure you're on top of it already. And before I move on to the next one, have you subscribed yet? I hope you have. Okay, if you haven't already done so, it takes less than 30 seconds to, to do it. Just click on the subscribe button, click on the notification bell. You will not miss anything I put on here if you do that. So let's move on. So the next requirement will be the GTE and the GTE is super, super important, guys. Very important. So the GTE is where you actually prove that you are a genuine temporary entrant into Australia and that you're actually coming into study. You're genuinely coming into study. And the way to prove this is to provide documentary evidence that shows that you have ties to your home country and that you will be returning after your study is over here in Australia. Now, 
I'm going to mention some of the things that should go into your statement of purpose. So your statement of purpose or the SOP is a document you would write. It is something you would write. It's like an essay that is part of fulfilling the GTE requirements. You want to make it really strong. You want to provide information like the ties you have back home, any investments, your employment. You also want to mention how the course you're coming into study is crucial to your career goals back in your home country. If maybe the course you're coming to study is crucial to advancing your career, getting a promotion, getting a pay rise, then you also want to include all of that in your SOP. But beyond that, like I said, you also have to provide evidence of everything you write in your SOP. So it doesn't end at just saying that you're going to do all these things or that you're returning home and you've got all these family ties, you want to provide evidence. If you talk about your family, for instance, maybe if there's any family obligations you have back home that will take you back when you finish your studies, you want to provide evidence of that. If you've got investments in property, then you also want to show your land documents. You want to show that you have a thriving, viable business. If you have a business investment back home, you also want to provide evidence around your work. So that might look like references from your employer, your pay slips, tax assessments, all those things. And all of this would go towards fulfilling the GTE requirements. I hope that was clear enough. Now let's move on to the other one, which is proof of funds. So for proof of funds, you obviously have to demonstrate financial capacity. So the Australian government wants to know that you, you will be able to look after yourself at least in the first 12 months after you arrive here. And that would include money that would cover your tuition for the first 12 months and also your living expenses. Okay, so the financial capacity evidence you need to um, demonstrate would be at least 62,222 Australian dollars for single applicants. So this would be for, this would apply to anyone who is coming in alone. And then the amount increases to 72,592 Australian dollars if you're coming in with family. You can demonstrate that you have this amount by documents like a bank statement in your name as the primary applicant or a loan from an approved financial institution like a bank okay or any other approved financial institutions but if you are going the way of sponsorship if someone is going to be sponsoring your education then you need to keep in mind that there are approved family members that can sponsor you and for the purpose of this visa the requirements are restricted only to these approved family members. The approved family members are a spouse or partner or parents. It could be one parent or both parents. Outside of these approved family members, unfortunately, for the purpose of applying for this visa, the Australian government does not recognize any other family members. And if you're going to be sponsored by any of these family members, then the evidence of financial capacity has to be in the form of tax assessments. The tax assessments would need to show that any of these approved family members that you're using as your sponsor is making up to the required amount as their annual income. So if you are coming in as a single person, then your sponsor's documents need to show that they are making at least 62222 Australian dollar equivalent in their annual income, right? And if you're coming in as a family, but you're sponsored by, you know, one of the approved family members, then they also need to show in tax documents that they make at least 72,592 Australian dollars or the equivalent annually. I hope that makes sense. Again, as I have said, the Australian government will only accept tax assessments. They will not accept bank statements from your approved sponsor. They won't accept letters from your employer or any evidence from your employer. It has to be in tax assessments, okay? The only time that a bank statement would be accepted is if it is a bank statement in your own name. And with your bank statement, you also have to prove the source of that money. So it's not just enough to have 
um, that money as a deposit in your bank statement, you also need to explain or provide proof of how you have accrued that money. So let's move on to the next one, which would be the overseas student health cover. So this is just insurance cover for yourself and any other person included in the same application. And your insurance needs to cover you for the duration of your studies in Australia. That's pretty clear enough, right? So another thing would be the health requirements. And um, to meet your health requirements, you have to visit a panel physician, an approved panel physician. So the Australian government has got a list of approved panel physicians in, in every region uh, around the world. So you need to make sure that you're getting your medical exams done at an approved panel physician. You can also find a, li um, a link in the description box it will take you to where you can actually search for the approved panel physician in your own country your health requirements include medical examinations um, to screen for tobacco losses if you're coming from a country in west africa i believe and then depending on the country that you're coming from you might also have to do a hepatitis b test um, and also an HIV test, okay? But like I said, you just have to find out that information for yourself and please follow the link that I'm going to drop in the description box. So we move on to character requirements. So this is where you want to prove that you are of good character, you have no criminal record. For this, you would have to fill out a form. It's called the Form 80. This is what it looks like. Okay, so that's the Form 80 and that form needs to be filled by both the primary applicant and any other person included in that application who is at least 18 years old. So in addition to that form, you might also need to provide police certificates. So police clearance checks from any country you've resided in in the 10 years prior to applying for your student visa. Now that I have spoken about all the documents that you need to apply for your student visa, I just wanted to make a very quick note here. If you're bringing family members in, then also you would have to provide ID documents for them like passports and birth certificates if you're coming in with children. If you're coming in with a spouse or a partner, then you also have to show evidence that you are in a committed and genuine relationship with your partner. And so you would need to provide documents like your marriage certificate, maybe joint bank account statements if you are a de facto, if you have a de facto partner. Um, it could also be things like a family photo book, you know, things like that, just to show that you have a genuine relationship going on. Okay. And like I said, your partner, if they are 18, at least 18 or over, or any other person included in that application will also need to fulfill the character requirements, which would involve them filling out a separate Form 80 and also getting a police clearance certificate from any country they've been in, in the 10 years prior to applying for the visa. Now for a more fleshed out version of this video, like I said at the beginning, that takes you through all the steps of applying for a visa, including the same document checklist that I have just run through with you, please check out the previous video I made. There's going to be a link in the description box and a link up here as well. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.